Dr. Atlina, thank you so much. I know you, you must be extremely tired from a full day, a full month of all of this. Thank you for agreeing to this interview. And thank you for coming. All right. So we have quite a number of questions. A lot of things need clarity. I hope you'll bear with us. Um, the president today mentioned 18,000 people who got into the country on the, 17th, on the 7th of March. Mm. And that's been uh, the narrative from every time the ministry has released a statement. Mm. Are, are there still 18,000 people? Uh, well, we don't have now the... the, the we need to reconcile our, our statistics because we know that from, from the time we started looking for these people, according to the manifest, um, we have got some people who we have tested. But at the same time also, we keep on getting more people that come in the country uh, through the borders. And, and now that even we have added the, 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 the people who come from Kenya, from Congo, from South Sudan, Tanzania, Rwanda, uh, th through our border points, um, by cargo or even those that sneak in and they, then they are, they are got and, and put under isolation. All those numbers, the, the number keeps on changing. So uh, as I talk now, I, I think it, it, must be, it must be less than um, 18,000. 18, right. 18, Do those 18,000 mm. include the 2,661 identified at the airport and those that reported back after the ministry sent out alerts to ask yes, people to come in? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, there was an article in the Daily Monitor uh, yesterday, yesterday, but mm -hmm. one about a UCU lecturer, lecturer mm -hmm. who um, shared her experience. She came into the country, she filled in the forms, mm -hmm. and she thought she'd be tested. She wasn't tested. She was sent home and told she'd, they'd come to her in a couple of days. Nobody ever did. The two weeks are done. Nobody yeah. went. Mm -hmm. I'm told they actually went after the paper, the article came out. Mm -hmm. But we know there are a lot of cases similar to that. People mm -hmm. who came in and nobody's checked in on them. Mm -hmm. But then when they see this message going out um, and they're being hunted and some of them feel like they're hunted like thieves. No. <laughs> yet they, they actually begged to be tested. Some people mm -hmm. went to the hospitals and said, test us. And they were turned away. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry if that happened. But, but also our workers are overwhelmed. We don't have workers that can go to everyone at a go at the same time. But at the same time, I, I do believe that, for example, that I see, uh, UCU lecturer, they could have just forgotten to, to record on the, on the list of the people that must, must be tested. But also we are giving priority right now when we are testing at that time. First of all, we didn't have enough test kits. Now, it is different to say, I traveled, I've been here for one month, I'm okay, I don't have, but I've come to test. It, and then it is different to say, I, ca I have come, I have fever, I have difficulty in breathing, I traveled. Now, when I have, if I have to rationalize my, my test kits and whatever I have, I'll go for this particular person who is sick, and then for you, I, I wait. So I think that could have happened, that maybe when, when she came for testing, maybe she found when we were in this confusion of everyone was swarming us, and maybe they, they, she was told to wait, and, and people just forgot. And but I'm glad that the, that the people have gone there, and, and they are going to test. And she did not have to, to, to go in the papers, because it's like uh, you must throw t tantrums in order to be, to be seen, which is really, <laughs> but which I is really not. I, I think it's that's really what it not feels that like. Place. Because there are so many people, Josephine. There are so many people out there who keep on calling us, and we go and test. And first of all, we get very many false, false alarms. Someone has asthmatic attack. Does not even divulge that you know. For me, I'm asthmatic attack. Anyone who sees someone difficult, with difficult in breathing, they call. And then we, we have spent so many test kits on, on cases that we would not have, would not have spent on and, and left the, 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 the real people who need to, to be tested. So what we are doing really at this time, we are really rationalizing because by then we didn't have enough test kits. So we would wait, we would wait. You, you, you who has been here for almost five weeks, and you don't have any symptom. It is unlikely that even if we test now, you are unlikely to be positive because maybe even the virus could have one. Maybe maybe those are people who need antibody tests. 
Right. I think the concern was when yes. she came in, when she should have been tested yes. because she had come into the country, yes. she wasn't tested. Yes. She kept asking four days later, nothing. Um, yes. You know, weeks later, still nothing. Th there's no test that was done. And I think the, the, the thought is that a lot of other people out there like her that were never tested. Mm. Now, even when they're being called back in, some mm. people, it seems, have been trying to call in. Mm. And they're not, you know, there's still no help for them. And it's actually help for them because they also no, want to be checked. But we, we still encourage. We still encourage. Pe let let people not get tired. Let us also know that uh, we are overwhelmed. All these numbers who are swarming us at the same time. People should not give up. They should they should try to call us. If we we can't respond today, tomorrow we will we'll respond. So we we want to help one another. Well, we, no. are here. we are really not here to find faults that, you know, I came, you didn't you care for. Uh, we, have, we have tested so many people. Or well, however long had. it takes, they should keep trying. We shall, we shall make sure that we take note of all the people who have called us and follow up. It mi we, we might delay, especially people who don't have any symptoms, because you know that, okay, this one maybe is just we are testing for the purpose of testing. But let's first concentrate on the people who show symptoms. Right. But otherwise, um, we apologize for, 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 that, for, for that lecturer who, who came and they did not, would not test. But finally, she's tested. Um, another concern that she raised, mm. which I also found very peculiar, when you're coming into the country, for anybody who's traveled, you know that you register. Yes. Your details are placed somewhere. So the ministry if they worked with the airport uh, authorities, mm. should be able to get the information you of all of these people. You might find that she's among these, these numbers that she could have been listed and she's among those ones that we are supposed to look for. So how are we looking for these people exactly? If we have the manifest and we, we could we reach out We get the manifest because also they, they, when they come in, they fill in a form. That form has their numbers, they have their location. So we got all that, that information. We Feed, f fed it into the, our system. We shared with our, uh, our, our, our colleagues in security to help us to, to know where to, to locate them, like geomapping, to know so many. Because now, like yesterday, uh, when we're having our D D DHO's meeting, we're, we're giving them information. Say, you have 12 people in your district, you need to help locate so, so that we test. You, you have 20, please help us to locate this one. So the, 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 that one, we, it, it needed time because you look at the number, you look at the, the location of the person, the address, and, and then you, you compound that whole information for the people to, to help in the field. Have we tried sending them bulk SMSs? Um, I think, well, I'm, I need to find out about, uh, about that. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure. All right. Now, Dr. Atwine, based on the number of cases um, of the tests that we've carried out, are mm. we confident that there haven't been cases of community spread of the virus? Uh, no, we haven't reached the community spreading, but we know that we had, you know there's a difference between local, local transmission and community transmission. Community transmission means that the people who come and test randomly, they, they, they are positive and they cannot even locate who could have, or where they could have picked the, the infection. But local transmission means that I, I had COVID and I gave it to so-and-so and that so-and-so gave it to so-and-so. So then you are able to, to, to track the chain. But, but at the moment we don't have, a, we, 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 don't, we haven't reached that, that uh, um, of community transmission. All right. Mm. Well, we want to congratulate the medical workers on the seven people that have been released. I, I'm sure we're releasing a couple of more, as the yes. president said earlier yes. today. Yes. What is the status of those who are still in the hospitals undergoing treatment at the three uh, hospitals that have been mentioned? We, we, we expect actually to, to also to s discharge seven who are supposed to go today. I don't know how, they haven't asked them how far they've gone. Um, and uh, the beauty about our patients really is that f more than 50% of, of the people we tested didn't have any symptom. And some of them have remained with no symptom. Even those that got uh, mild symptoms, they are wearing of some that had fever, 
cough, some had some chest discomfort, they are wearing off. It was only like, we had like two, three people who, who still had persistent fever, but, but uh, I'm told um, this morning when I talked to the doctor, the, the, the temperature is coming, it has come down. They are still coughing, they are still having some chest uh, symptoms, but, but the, we think that these people will, will improve and go home without going through the, the ICU and ventilation and all that. Have we checked on the people that we sent home? We, well, they, they left on Saturday. I, we need to find out from the epidemiologists because we have the epidemiologists that are supposed to be checking on them to know how they have settled. Um, there are some, some hard challenges to go to their places. Um, although the, the, the community was talked to, but some people did not kind of uh, accept at first they were kind of resisting, so it took us, our teams, to go back and, and explain, and, and then they, they, were, they were allowed in. All right. Do they have some kind of security? Also, because I know there's a gentleman we interviewed on NTV uh, a couple of weeks ago who came back, mm -hmm. was tested, and he was negative. sent back to his community, which then rallied in numbers and beat him up. Oh, no. Yes, and he went to Mulago and then was sent to another hospital. And right now he's struggling, just paying his bills from uh, that, that, you know, just the wounds from the beating that he received. That's if anybody that's, that's, that's bad. But it's happening. Is anybody making sure that the people that we've sent home are actually safe? Well, we, d we don't anticipate the community to, to that, especially where the community is you know, is engaged and talked to and say, you know, this person is safe, the results are here, don't please accept. And then you leave, because we can't, we can't deploy security in every home where, the, how are we going to manage that? And we expect really the population to understand. That is very unfortunate if they did that. All right. Hmm. At what point would the ministry then announce having have succeeded in the fight against COVID-19 oh in Uganda. Is it when thing. the people suspected have been tested or when there are no active cases left? Uh, well, we cannot do mass testing. It is very, very expensive. So I cannot say that when everyone has tested and, and, uh, and, and then we say, hey, we have defeated. That's not possible. We are not going to do that. But we do believe that if we, we, we spend um, like in the next three weeks combing and getting all these people who want to get and we test and they're all negative and we cannot, we cannot see a chain of transmission. If we put our, if we, if we strengthen our border entry point, because now after three weeks we are going to open. Okay? We are going to open. So these three weeks we have a lot of work to do. The border points we must increase our staff there to test so that there's no clogging. We must streamline the flow of these people who are coming in the country. Those of the trucks, like you had, the, the president was guiding us that we need to designate places and make sure that those places are guarded so that these people don't go and sleep in the hotels and maybe spread, but also create a channel of information sharing with our neighbors. Because if, if 
if someone is going to Burundi and is tested in Malaba in a truck, um, it means that when he goes and we get the result, for example, assuming that he's positive, we'll not be able to get to this person, but we can share information with the country where this person has gone and say, this person has been tested, please isolate the, this, this officer or his team to make sure that they, they, they undergo um, treatment. So that, that process it, it is requiring a lot of uh, planning, a lot of consulting, a lot of reviewing our processes. So, so it, we are going to be very busy these three weeks. The president today spoke about, he made mention of President Uhuru Kenyatta from mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm -hmm. Is there a joint um, communique, you know, any collaboration between the East African countries in any way in fighting this? We, we are working together, but each country has unique protocols and unique approach to, to COVID. But, the, the, for example, I think next week the health ministers are supposed to meet um, on a video conferencing okay. and, and not, <laughs> not, not, not. I was just people. being sure. And, <laughs> no, that one, okay. that one can't work. So, so it, it is, um, it is very important that we agree on certain minimum processes that we need to harmonize. Each country remains a sovereign state and, and they, they, they do their, the, yeah. we, we do, all of us are, have our different approaches. Our approach may not be the same way Rwanda is doing, or, or Tanzania, or, Tanzania yeah. or Burundi. But there are certain things that we need to agree on in, in order to, to enhance communication and to exchange information, especially for the people, especially cross-border. Yeah. Cross-border. By the way, that's where our biggest worry is. Uh, right sure. now, our worry is not the inside the, the team. The, even, even those that w we are talking about of, of 18,000, that's not our big worry because we know that if really they were there sick, some would already have come to our hospitals. But we want to be sure that you know they're okay because we've seen some people are symptomatic, although we've not really witnessed anybody who remains asymptomatic and, uh, for two months. All right. Well, there seems to be the general thought mm. from Europe and other countries abroad and from a lot of Ugandans now mm. that. Africa is experiencing the calm before the storm, that the worst is yet to come. Yes. Yes. That's why we are saying, you know, when people are saying, yeah, 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 we said no. We are just at the foot of the epidemic. We are just at the foot. We do not know what in the next three weeks will be like. We can't tell until we've gone out and tested and, and made sure that we follow up all our 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 people who have had contacts with the sick and test them. And the borders. And the border, the borders. Okay. Because people still are sneaking into our country. Many actually, many, many are not known. And that's why we really, we need to intensify the message to the population so that when they see anybody who is not from that area, they, they, they make an alarm. They don't have to beat, but they, they can make an alarm for, for people to to, to come and say, where are you from? We don't know you here. Have you been tested? Where are you coming from? Can you show us your documents? So that then we, we are able to, to, to maintain some sanity. Okay. Mm. Um, there was a debate that was uh, taking place online about mm. in some countries, wouldn't you just rather let you know, people go on business as usual and, and they get build their immunity? immune systems, yes, as opposed to this situation, we are locking people up and, you know. We cannot determine how it would turn around to be. Those people, like in US, you know, at first they were saying, oh, had immunity, had immunity. Now, they have turned parks where people go and sit and mm, for leisure, they have turned them to, to become symmetries. We don't want to get there. Because other people who have been there before us, the, the experience is not so good. So we don't want to take chances. Why take chances with the human lives? That so-called herd, herd immunity. First of all, here, our country, we have one point, almost 1.5 million HIV. people with HIV. We have almost 800 people with diabetes. Diabetes alone, it, this disease gets you, you cannot survive. 
or if you survived, you really it is, you survive at the age. Yeah. So we don't want to take the, the chances, and it is extremely expensive. COVID treatment is extremely expensive because when we admit someone in ICU, the minimum time they will take there is three weeks, just on a, on one ventilator. Now, imagine if if we got so many people like now in, in other countries. They, they look at you and say, how this one is 80, uh -uh. don't put on a ventilator, let this one die. They, we they, can they, afford they, to lose they, him. There's a friend of mine who called me from UK where his, his auntie was, uh, wa, wa, was in ICU. They came and checked on the chair. They said, no, disconnect. We have, we have, we have a 30 year old who is coming in. This one will disconnect. They disconnected and the woman packed. So, so we don't want to get to, to that level because it, it hurts. It just hurts because everyone has the, the same right to life. Are we so prepared for that level? We are trying. We have, we have, we have ordered more equipment. We have ordered uh, about 140 ventilators, 140 ICU beds, monitors, and all those other accessories for the ICUs so that Actually, before you came, in, you, you saw the engineers, they were here. I was sending them to the regional referral hospital because they have to go and remodel and put and prepare because the, this equipment is coming in two weeks' time. So we need all these things to be done. All right. I'll Every regional referral hospital is going to have about 10 ICU beds. Then we have, we have the other mobile hospital, one of 250, with ICU beds also. It is there in container, it's waiting. Any time bomb, if we get that catastrophic situation, we have also the, the mobile hospitals. They are, they are waiting. We shall roll them out. I had someone say, oh, we have not contacted uh, Nambole. We don't have to contact. When well, once there is need, we shall just roll the thing and put them there and start admitting people. We don't have to ask anyone. Every time the president addresses the nation, he speaks about the need for four by four uh, the, the cars. Yes, you know. the cars, yes. And um, I'm wondering, was that a request from the ministry that this is what we really, really need? We need these kinds of cars? Or is it <laughs> that the president <laughs> thinks this is what we need? Uh, Josephine, but what does the ministry really, really need? Uh, Josephine, cars are part of the needs. We have a whole list of needs. That's why when we went to, to defend our budget in, in parliament, we are saying minimally we want 400 and four billion minimally. Of course, they gave us ninety-four. We have so many needs. One of the needs are the cars. Now our people, everyone is calling them. Everyone is calling them from their homes. How do they move? We need cars. That's the beginning point. Then we have also the other the other equipment can come like the one I've told you about with the one we've ordered for. But over time. Definitely, the, the, we, we first look at the hierarchy of needs. The cars are there. I see equipment, they are there. PPEs, they are there. So those are things now we are grappling with. You know, today the president also said that it would be it would defeat the purpose mm -hmm. to open the schools, but not open the transport sector exactly. because how are the children going to get to school? Exactly. And this now brings me to the cars because we might have the cars, mm -hmm. but where are you taking the people? And to what equipment? So you take them to hospitals that are, are not ready them to, to receive even, them. Even people who need to deliver need to be transported. You don't have to, Our health center threes are able to deliver. We have even built more. We have almost 200 now health center threes where we are going to put equipment and they will be delivering. But those women cannot get there. We need to move them there, especially under lockdown this period. But also there are other people. There are other HIV patients who are, who are sick. We have heart disease. The other day, uh, I, I, re I received here a request from Cancer Institute. Cancer Institute was stuck with so many patients who had completed their treatment and they wanted to go home and they couldn't and they wanted transport. So all those are needs that we we have to, to plan for. Our health workers who want to come and work don't have cars. The majority don't own cars. 
they need to be transported. How do we move them to our facilities if we don't have cars? So all these are issues so that So cars really are a priority. It is a big priority. All right. Um, you speak about pregnant women, and we've seen so many stories of pregnant women dying on their way to hospital, women trying giving birth on the way. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it just feels like our logistics are not probably, uh, properly coordinated. That, mm -hmm. you know, we'd, we'd allow for this kind of situation. It feels like we're having to choose between COVID-19 and other deaths. No, it is unfortunate that, that, that that's how you are thinking. Every life matters, even malaria. Someone suffering from malaria needs care, the way the other COVID person is. Why we are putting so much under someone was saying, hey, you guys, you are fussing too much about COVID. Because COVID, when it comes, it spreads like wildfire. While malaria, we have been with it. We, we know how to handle even someone can go to the pharmacy, by coatem and, and you know swallow and, and go to a clinic somewhere. But COVID, that's why we have to, to be very, very, very aggressive to make sure that we limit this disease. Because it is going to disrupt all our systems if we don't really become tough on it. But every life matters. So how are we helping these women? How are we helping I'm going to get to the other diseases, but I'm I'm very no, pregnant no, women, women is an issue. We we, we were encouraging, even yesterday we were talking about it here with the DHOs. We were advising them, that, that and I, I, even the president talked about it. We need some bit of being innovative, you know. You cannot say, oh, now there is curfew, now the cars are here. They will. No, you are supposed to sit with your D DPC, RDC, and say, we have mothers who are in this sub-county, let's put a car there. So, and, and sub-county, please, uh, you put even, even you can even co 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 create a, a, a group. These days, technology has simplified things. Then, then sub-county becomes a, a focal person in the sub-county. So that doesn't have to be all the time RDC. Because also RDC may be at the headquarter. The woman is 30 kilometers away from, from the, where RDC is. For someone to come and seek for permission in writing and then to go back to pick the, the woman. For example, some people have cars. And someone, actually, uh, I think uh, the question came through when, he, when the president was talking. That if I have my car, must I really, why, why can't I be allowed? Once I have evidence that this is actually a patient I am taking to the hospital. So what really, what we need to do? Common sense, really. Common sense, but also looking at, at the, the, the environment. This person is in a car with a woman. The woman is pregnant. She was a pregnant woman, you, ca you can't say, I did not see. The, the pregnant woman, you just look at the tummy and you just see the woman is pregnant. So uh, I think you have th that flexibility, the team in the district, RDC, DPS, and DHO can work out a program that can cater for all these unique issues. I think when we talk about common sense, the reason I smile is because when you say a pregnant woman is visible to everybody, I wonder about the people who beat up a seven months pregnant old woman, as though that no. was not visible <laughs> enough. <laughs>
Now that the ministry is under this strain of COVID-19, mm. you've mentioned it, HIV, diabetes, malaria, we have all of these things. Mm. How are you allocating resources to ensure that um, one part is not neglected at the expense of another? We, we, for example, at the hospital, first of all, like now here in Mulago, we made sure that the other facilities remain operational. Chirudu is continuing to, 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 to deliver the services se separately. Um, Kawempe continue, even, even, even in other places, even in regional referral hospitals. Now, we have set aside a facility. For example, here it is in Mulago. Because Mulago was under renovation, we didn't inconvenience anybody. And, and that's where we are admitting our patients. The only part that we have inconvenience is in Tebe. Because in Tebe, the patients that were going there, we, we stopped them and we transferred them to Katabi. And, 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 uh, and, and Tebe has been purely designated for COVID. But when you look at other facilities, down, for example, um, some DHOs had, uh, had opted to, to, to change, for example, Health Center 3, a whole Health Center 3 dedicated to COVID. We said, no, we cannot allow that. Anyone suspected to have COVID, we can look for a school, put them there, to first test, then we transfer the positive to the regional referral hospitals. But we let the services of health center twos, health center threes, health center fours, general hospitals continue running normally because people will continue falling sick. And we, do not, we don't want to see us losing more people to other diseases than the COVID where we, we are all concentrating and, 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 and then we, we, we cannot reverse the statistics, really. Okay. Yes. Um, when we keep talking about the number of people that we've tested, and uh, the 5,664 people is what the president said mm -hmm. today and the ministry released yesterday. Are we testing, have we tested 5,664 people or have we had 5,664 tests done? We have had 5,664 tests done. Okay. Remember that there are, there are some people where we are repeating tests, especially the ones under quarantine. And then also we had uh, people admitted. Before we release them, we repeat. So we have so far tested 5,664. It, the, the, if you go to people tested, it could, the number could be slightly could be lower. Uh, lower than that. Since some of these are repeat tests. Yes. So yes. this is 5,664 tests done mm -hmm. on um, less than 5,000 people, of these mm -hmm. 18,000 mm -hmm. um, people. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, somebody was speaking to us today and they said when you go to Mulago, you don't even find paper to print. You don't uh, paper for photocopy. Do we have adequate resources but, but, but for this? But that is not true. That is not true. And I'm going to find out why. Because someone should be able to tell us. Because that is not acceptable. Yes. All right. it's not, this, ha this has nothing to do with the resources. Surely resources for papers. Is, we can't fail to, to have resources for papers. But I want to know. And I'm going to find out. Right. I, I want to check my phone because there is a Twitter handle that has been created mm -hmm. specifically by, I think it's a health worker mm -hmm. who um, I think feels that the ministry is not responding to the needs of the health workers mm -hmm. and so has at this point decided to start putting out um, their thoughts online on social media. Mm -hmm. And it well, says... From where? Maybe, maybe it's, a, it's in a private, maybe where? where? I am, I'm really not sure it is, but he said this is a temporary account to make health workers' voices reach His Excellency. Since Ministry of Health is not responding to workers' needs, um, it hurts to work and feel you're not recognized. But so, one so, of the... So what, what exactly, uh, what, what is the issue? What, what are they the issues? They have quite a number of there, issues. And, and one of the issues that's coming out is medical workers getting paid their allowances. They claim that they are not, um, the support that was promised to them is not the support that they are being given. Can we tell the country that we've equipped these people, we've trained them, we've equipped them, and we are paying them on time and motivating them to actually do the work and put themselves at the front? It, it would be good to know specifics because, for example, allowances we pay at the end of the month. 
we compute the number of days. Actually, I have been asking them to compute so that they, they send to us for, um, their request and we pay. So that is not really too, too late because they have been working for, it's, it's almost a month now. So they cannot say they have not been paid. If they had gone working with, with over two months, then I would worry. But we pay at the end of the month. Um, the PPEs, the ones that were worrying them, we have had now enough PPEs. We've distributed in all hospitals, all, including health center threes, to have the masks and the gloves to make sure that when they are they are attending to people, they are protected. So I, I wish I could know the, the support or the, the issues, the particular issues they would want us to address. They, then I would be so happy to. The thing that surprised me the most about you is how active you are on social media. So this is probably an account that you want to look I, into I, and I just see what's to, happening. I want to, and I, I can assure I would follow up. Okay. Uh, I just need to know, and for sure I would follow up, because I know health workers, without our health workers, we We're cannot nothing. do anything. That's true. Therefore, that, that's why we need to motivate. And part of these, these things we are receiving, we are going to present to our committee in the Office of the Prime Minister and present our plan, our distribution plan. They allow us because part of these things must go to them. Yes. Most of the countries, and depending on this, um, that have succeeded have done mass tests. Mm. You've said we can't afford it. What is our capacity now? What can we afford to do? Ah. In a day, for example, how many tests can we do? We, we, are, we are doing targeted testing. We are not doing mass testing. Mass testing is like you go to the banks, you test everyone, you, go, you stand on the road, everyone who is coming, you test, you, you go to, to, to the street, in the market, you test. It's not possible. We can't do How that. many tests can we do in a day? We can, our machine can, do, can run up to, I think, 750 per day. And we can test CPHL, our Central Public Health Laboratory, is a level three um, uh, laboratory. It is world class. It can do the test. Yes, CRSC has a full-fledged virology department and, and, and all equipment they need to test. We have got also now, we have imported the cartridge for, for gene expert, the cartridge for particularly COVID. Once they come here, we are going to be having more tests um, spread out to, to, to other areas, not just in one place here. When we get also antibody testing, we are going to, to target, especially the, 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 the people who, who came and they've been in the country beyond one month. Because the assumption is that if they were exposed, most likely the virus, they could have cleared the viremi already. Mm -hmm. But at least we can test the antibody and we can tell that although you have cleared, you don't have the virus, but you are exposed. Therefore, let's go for the people you are with. Maybe some of them could be sick. We are also going to use that at the entry point at, 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 at the, the border. border points. Because those ones are quicker, so you are able to get roughly who is sick and who is not sick, and then you, you know you isolate people accordingly. The, the people so. the president kept speaking about today, the ones who came in, we don't know if they were positive or negative, they mm. probably fought it off, mm. and they're okay, yes. but we need them. Mm. How are we going to go uh, through we, that? We have their contacts. We have their contacts, and, and we have already asked the, the different districts different okay. localities to, to get them and, and get them tested. Jackman's test kits, mm. what happened to those? How many have we used? Do we Jackman's expect Jackman's test, we got about 20,000 test kits. We still have some, and we're expecting actually more consignment. We expect tomorrow to get uh, the swabs and viral uh, transport medium, about 18,900. Uh, we expect extraction kits, 18,912. Okay. We expect medical disposable protective clothing of 3,800. And face shields, 3,800. Ventilation machines, 15 of them. 
thermometer those those uh, um, thermometer gun 36 of them and medical gloves 9500 we are we are we are, we are also go, go, going to get um, more supplies that are, are being lo locally manufactured M Mulwana is making now the, the those uh, uh, face shields um, we are also she's making also the aprons the, the plastic aprons um, we hope that um, the, the other the, the other people who are making uh, masks also they are, they are they will be able to get the equipment in the country quickly and start manufacturing so we, well, I think on the PPEs we, we are not doing badly and more we, we, we more more consignment actually yesterday we got more consignment we we are we procured it arrived and i think in, by end of this week we are going to get the the, the, the test kits the cartridge for for gene experts the okay. gene experts with well, a good thing we have over 200 in the country okay but we so can, far we can, we can do 750 a day yeah. no no that's 750 is molecular but if we use the the machines we are using now in uvri and JCRC and and um, and and, and uh, CPHL each can do that. Each so can in do a, in, in, a, in a day we can actually run over two thousand tests if we had the test kits. Okay. Yeah. What are we doing for the movement of the health workers? I know Casey here is trying to help out, but is there anything else we are doing? In in Kampala, we have given our hospitals buses that every morning take, pick them wherever they, they come from and uh, they come to work, then in the evening they take them. Today we're a bit disrupted. I got to know that our, our buses that were taking our workers were impounded. I am yet to, to find out from, uh, from our, our, our police chief what, what happened and they were pulling off the, the stickers and that has disrupted our work actually very, very much today. Today, today when the epidemiologists didn't do any work. That's because, very dangerous. Because the pickups, the war, they, they were impounding them, so we don't know. And I didn't know until we came back. So we are going to find out. I hope we shall rectify that. We need to know what exactly happened. Mm -hmm. My last question to you. Yes. Did we make any mistakes at the beginning, and have we corrected them? The mistakes, we suddenly announced institutional quarantine without first getting accommodation and sorting that. So planes were powering at the airport with people, and we were stuck. But. Uh, after a few days, we were able to, to sort. Because also the problem at first, many hotels, everywhere I would go, people didn't want to, to get people of COVID in, in there. They thought they were sick. We are saying these are people who are normal. We are just keeping them to quarantine them. After 14 days, they will go. But then so many people turned in the middle of the night. You can imagine. There is a night we moved from hotel to hotel till morning when we were moving with people to get hotels. But, but I, I thank God that that, that phase is over. So we, we are here, we, 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 are, we have now schools, we, even we are getting more schools, we, we, we are sorted. So the mistakes, yes, we are done at the, at the beginning, but now we know what to do. When you're constantly telling health workers, <laughs> and I had Dr. <laughs> Cheng tell them the other day in no uncertain terms, when you realize you're tired, rest. Yes. Do you all take your own <laughs> advice? Do I look rest? When you look at my face, really, do because you see Because at the end of the day, has rested, at so? the end of the day, we need you whole. <laughs> Without rest, the same advice you're giving them is probably the same but you should be taking. It is not possible because this phone, since you, since you are here, you've, you've seen this phone <laughs> ringing every minute, and I cannot switch off this phone. Because even, even when I switch off this phone that I want to sleep, I will just wake up still and put it on because I'll be very guilty if someone is stuck with a mother who wants to deliver and needs transport and cannot go through. 
and they are looking for me. How can I explain in the morning when I, they tell me the woman died? So I can't. I just can't. It's not possible. It's just not possible. Okay. But go, by God's grace, we shall pull through. Because where there is a will, they there will. is always a way. Because the will is there, really, we want to work. We eh? want to do our best. I made so many challenges, like now the, our buses, our workers impounded. So all those are things we have to sort. Every day we, are, we have emergencies, every minute. For us, we, w this month is a month of emergency, but I know that we shall overcome. What would you like to say to Ugandans as your final thought for now, in the period that we are in, on the day we are, we've been told 21 more days yes. in lockdown? What is your message to them? Ah, my message, I know that this message is very hard to know that people are going to be confined for another three weeks. But as you heard, the president calls this a battle, and it's not about comfort. It's not about doing what we love best. It is all about observing for this period. And I know that the season will come, and it will go, and we shall overcome. We just need to be disciplined. We need to be persistent. We need to be, to be patient and to, and to listen and, and, and really to stay safe. There is nothing in life that is more important than life. You can have what, you can worry about money, you can worry. But when life is, is, is afflicted, when your health is afflicted, everything else comes to a standstill. So let us first deal with this, this, this monster in the house together. If all of us are thinking alike and acting alike, I can assure you nothing will defeat us. Nothing. Because I know that the principle of the, 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 the Tower of Babel still applies. When people are united in purpose, there's nothing that we cannot defeat. Even this COVID we shall defeat. If we stay safe, we stay home, be patient, endure, vomiria, vomiria, please, vomiria. That the, 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 the season will end and we shall come back victorious and enjoy our beautiful Uganda. Well, you mentioned the Bible and you made me have another question. You know, they say journalists are like pastors. You give them the microphone, they'll never stop asking questions. <laughs> so let me ask my last one. Um, the task force. Mm. What exactly the different task force is doing? And I know somebody asked this question to Dr. Cheng on how do we ensure that the money that is being collected, the contributions that people are bringing in, mm. are in the safe hands mm. that will not allow for this money to disappear into oh. people's stores and houses? It, no, 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 not, no, not in our care, no. That one, no. In ending, we say, Nichikafuhi, let it be not even be heard. I want to assure Ugandans First of all, I want to thank all the people that have, have given us support in kind and with money. The money, we opened an account. This account is a collection account. At the end of the day, and that's why we write a, a list, take it so that the president reads, so that everyone knows whoever wants to write, writes. At the end of the day, we are going to come back and tell you, we collected so much, this is the thing we have collected. This is what we have got. This is what we ha how we have used it. For the things they've given us, even I was, wa when, when they come to us here, when they give us these things, we, there is a form, we write even the contact. When we are going to give out those very things to the people who need them, we are going to call their representative. They must be present. They must, partic they must be able to participate to see that their things actually have gone to the very people who need them, not in my home. I don't need those things. I don't need that push. I don't need, the, you know, I can afford to, to buy a push. So I, I don't have to steal, really. I, I don't have to rob. The, the little portion really for, for this border border man that is in the house, 
and cannot afford, uh, surely that, that would be so unfortunate. If anybody does that, it's so unfortunate. And I pray, really, I just pray. And I was telling my colleagues, I said, you know what? This is a blessing for us to be participating at such a time as this, to reach out to people who need our help. Let us do even extra, give more than even what we can give. To give time, give everything, make sure that we get all these things people have given us to reach the people who really need them. And therefore, as I conclude, I want to assure you, Josephine, and the <laughs> listeners, that we, we don't condone theft. Theft is a curse when you steal. When you steal from, like now those things from me, I was telling them, you steal those things, they are curse. They, they bring a curse on you. And I don't want to get a curse with my house and my children. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord and we shall do the right thing. We shall not steal from, from the sick. What is the national task force that you're part of doing? What exactly is the laid out role? Our, our national task force, first of all, is to mobilize resources, to make sure that uh, these resources are well distributed to the people who need them, and make sure that we account. All right. Mm. Thank you so much, Dr. Atwine. Thank you. I know you've had a long day, a long couple of weeks, and you've still given me this opportunity. Thank you, Van. But so much thank time. you so much for coming. All right. And thank you for visiting. <laughs> I sanitized as many times as I could. <laughs>